In this video, I'm going to be sharing some techniques on how to process raw bracketed exposures to better represent what your eyes actually see at night. Before we go into the workflow, just a few words about camera settings needed for exposure blending, which might be helpful for beginners. Taking this image as an example, while not ideal, I shot the brackets handheld as time was short and didn't want to miss the scene. Also, I was waiting in the water for a better angle. The shooting mode was set to manual. The shutter speed was a relatively fast 1 over 125. This was done for three reasons. To avoid camera shake, reduce the chance of bracket misalignment, which is problematic for image blending software, and to keep the moving persons in the scene reasonably sharp. The aperture was set to the lens sweet spot of f over 8. ISO was set to auto. The drawback of choosing these settings was a noisy image. You can see the camera automatically set the ISO to the maximum of 51,200. That was, however, a better alternative than getting an unusable blurred shot. To mitigate the problem, I denoised the raw brackets with DXO Pure Raw 4, which I've discussed in other videos. Do check out my review on Pure Raw 4 if interested. I'll leave a link in the description. So with the camera settings out of the way, let's move on to consider what type of processing would work best to bring out the details of the actual scene. The first option would be to simply edit the properly exposed RAW file. Let's try that. I'll reduce the exposure to see what kind of detail can still be recovered. As you can see, despite being shot in the RAW format with a full-frame camera, the sensor is unable to recover detail in the moon's highlights, which is the most important part of this scene. Not an acceptable result at all. The second option would be to brighten up underexposed scene. That would seem to be the better option. At least you can be assured of being able to see the moon's details. Let's try that. I'll bring up the shadows. As it is still looking underexposed, I'll augment the adjustment with the Curves tool. I'll manipulate the curve to form a reverse S. By the way, if you want to know more about the Curves tool, do check out my video on that topic. Unfortunately though, aside from the adjustment still looking pretty dim and unnatural, the resulting image is also looking very soft with smudged details. This becomes more obvious when you compare it side by side with a properly exposed bracket. The reason for this is the underexposed bracket is a lot noisier and requires more aggressive denoising, and that's the cause for the lower quality result. So with this solution not working, let's move on to the next alternative. The third option would be to perform an HDR merge with Affinity's powerful tone mapping persona. Let's try that. I'll click File, New HDR Merge. I'll choose the two brackets. I'll click OK. Unfortunately though, the tone mapping failed to blend properly. The underexposed bracket seems to have been left out in the processing. Once again, not a great result. So with all these methods failing, let's move on to the final option, exposure blending, which, while has more steps, allows for full control over the blending process. To begin exposure blending, I'll first get out of the develop persona and navigate to Photo Persona. Next, I'll use the Selection Brush to select the sky. I'll use the Refine Brush to handle the complicated edges. As you can see, 
Affinity does a great job distinguishing between the sky and the tiny gaps within the trees. The selection of the sky has been made. I'll invert the selection to select the foreground. I'll click the mask button. There, the sky has been removed. Even when zooming up close, you can see Affinity has done a great job masking out the sky. Next, I'll add the underexposed bracket as a layer. I'll do that via copying and pasting. The two images have been blended and the moon's details are now clearly visible. Unfortunately though, while the moon is properly exposed, the rest of the sky is underexposed. Intuitively, what I'll need to do is to perform an exposure adjustment to get the sky just right. I'll increase the exposure. I'll reduce the highlights. Surprisingly, the highlights adjustment is not doing a great job. While the color of the moon is properly recovered, the detail is looking very subdued. As such, I won't go through the highlight adjustment. Instead, I'll make the adjustment on the moon on another layer. To do that, I'll go back to Develop Persona. I'll duplicate the underexposed layer. I'll rename it as Moon. I'll move the Moon layer to the top. I'll reduce the exposure to bring out the details in the Moon. With a selection brush, I'll select the Moon. I'll click the mask button. And there you go, the beautiful scene which better represents what my eyes saw that night. While it does not compare with being there in person, the photo at least represents a far superior result than just relying on a single exposure. Let me know if you have any questions, write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.